With so many cameras on the market at various different price points, what camera do you buy for YouTube videos? In this video, I'll be sharing some of the features you wanna look out for as you're on your hunt to find your YouTube camera. Let's get it. You gotta just press record. Hey, what's up? It's Omar al with Think Media, helping you build your influence with online video. And on this channel, sometimes we do tip videos for YouTube and strategy tips, as well as tech gear reviews and product recommendation videos, just like this one. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. So on this channel, we do tons of videos on camera comparisons and camera reviews. And honestly, nowadays, uh, most cameras on the market are gonna be great for video. However, you definitely wanna consider some features when really boiling down your options. So in this video, I'm not really gonna point you at a specific camera, but I definitely wanna share some features that you wanna be aware of that cameras have or, or don't have uh, in regards to the kind of videos you're gonna be creating. Now, I know that YouTube videos can vary from vlogs to cinematic videos to talking head videos like this. Uh, and, and all the above, right? But uh, just keep in mind, a lot of people from our Think Media community are usually wanting to shoot good YouTube videos like this or vlog. And so that's kind of where I'm gonna lean towards more, uh, not really kind of like the cinematic or like the behind the camera person, but a camera that's really great to, to film yourself with and things like that. So let's get into the first feature you wanna look out for. So if I was in the market to buy a camera for YouTube videos, the first thing I want to take into consideration is the resolution and frame rates. I would definitely look for a camera that can shoot at a minimum 1080p, uh, and that was what you would consider full HD. Now, cameras nowadays for sure shoot 4K, even up to 8K, but in regards to the next step from 1080p is 4K. Now, I would, for a few different reasons, wouldn't recommend 4K. And I think the first one is that if your uh, you know, video editing setup, whether you're using a computer or a laptop, would be crushed by 4K files because they're a lot bigger than 1080p files and things like that, then by all means, go for a 1080p camera. But nonetheless, you definitely don't want a camera that shoots under 1080p. And something to keep in mind is if you want to eventually shoot 4K, you totally can buy a 4K camera, but then shoot in 1080 until you're ready to handle the 4K files. Let's get into the next one. Without a doubt, if you're using your camera for YouTube videos, I would definitely recommend getting a camera that has an audio input. Now, most cameras on the market don't have good onboard microphones. Like if you have nothing hooked up to it and it's just capturing the sound that's coming out, it's probably not gonna be that good. And so uh, you can always level that up and, uh, and bypass that by plugging in a mic into a camera, but you can't plug in a mic into a camera that doesn't have a mic input. And so that's definitely something to think about uh, when you're buying a camera. I love the ability to use either a lav mic or a boom mic, but not being able to plug it directly in my camera and potentially recording on a separate recorder device or record on my computer and then sync the audio and the video in post, uh, it just kind of ruins the workflow. Uh, like right now, I have a boom mic going straight into the camera, and so the audio on the video file sounds great, but definitely something you wanna think about when buying a camera nowadays. The next feature you wanna look out for is a camera that either has a flip out screen or a flip up screen, but nonetheless, the ability to see yourself while you're filming to make sure your shot's good, make sure you're in focus and things like that. Um, you know, Canon has done a really good job at always including this kind of feature in most of their cameras, uh, even early on. Um, I think uh, it's super helpful to be able to see yourself. And some actually have touch screens, so you can literally tap your face and then you'll be in focus no matter if you're moving forward or back. Sony has kind of made their way in, but nonetheless, definitely wanna make sure that the, your camera has that ability. And if it does not, and you're okay with not being able to see yourself, you can invest in a monitor. A lot of people use monitors on their cameras and then flip it toward themselves and plug in an HDMI into it. But then it starts getting really technical and I love keeping it simple, smooth, clean, and mean. Uh, but on, nonetheless, you definitely wanna look out for a screen that flips up back at you. The next tip is reliable autofocus. I think it's so important to find a camera that you can trust is tracking your face or whatever you wanna focus on uh, when you want it to do so. You know, uh, before the autofocus revolution of Canon's famous dual pixel autofocus, that's the technology that Canon typically uses in their cameras, um, is you would have to manually 
focus on your subject, which would be really hard to not only see yourself on the screen and then focus yourself. And then, you know, if I decided to move or if my chair, you know, moved, I was using a rolling chair or something, I would find myself out of focus. That's not uh, that helpful. And you can totally buy cameras nowadays that have incredible autofocus. There is without a doubt, a ton of cameras on the market that have great flip out screens, flip up screens, and have the ability to keep yourself in focus. Like right now, I'm not manually focused. I'm, uh, I am auto focused right now. Like if I come closer to the camera, it focuses on me still. When I back up, it still focuses on me. Uh, and so you definitely wanna be able to keep that in mind when you're looking for a camera. The camera should, without a doubt, have great autofocus. The next feature would be a blurry background. Now, the first uh, feature I talked about was resolution. And I do want to clear the air that resolution doesn't have anything to do with a blurry background. I think a lot of people are like, oh, sweet, the camera shoots in 4K, get a 4K camera, and it doesn't give them a blurry background. And uh, the likelihood of this is because what gives you a blurry background in your image is without a doubt the lens that you're using on the camera. And so do you want a blurry background? Then you may want to potentially look at a camera that has interchangeable lenses or the ability to change the lens uh, on that camera. And so I am shooting on a lens that does not come with a camera. Uh, I'm shooting on the Sigma 16 millimeter 1.4 lens. We've made a ton of videos on this lens. And this lens in particular gives me this look, gives me that like I'm in focus, my background's blurry, and I'm about a little longer than arm's length distance from my camera. And, uh, and that's the look I want. But you definitely wanna keep that in mind because if I buy a, a camcorder, uh, I might not be able to achieve uh, that uh, blurry background, although the camera may have the flip out screen, the audio jack input, the resolution I want. Uh, is it giving me a blurry background? It probably won't be unless you're super zoomed in from far away, which isn't practical. Uh, so definitely something to keep into consideration. Now, I don't wanna ding point and shoot cameras because nowadays there are some great point and shoot cameras on the market that have all those features, that has the flip up screen, has the audio jack input, has great autofocus, but uh, the lens itself does give you a blurry background. And we've made videos on that as well. But again, this video isn't me trying to sell you or make you look at a specific camera. I just want you to know that these are things to think about, ask yourself, when you're on the market, when looking for a camera. Do you want a camera with interchangeable lenses so you can change the look and vibe of your videos and or photos? Maybe you do. Now I got a few more features you definitely wanna ask yourself, but before I do, if you're getting value in this video, smash that like button for me, thank you so much. And question for you is, what kind of content are you creating and what are you looking for when uh, when you're looking for a camera? Do you want that blurry background? Do you want everything I mentioned? Are you in 4K or a 1080 person? Let me know in the comment section below. I wanna point your attention to our playlist of camera comparisons. Uh, we definitely do a ton of those on Think Media and we have some favorites. We, we definitely keep in mind the person that is looking for a camera and this will be their first camera. And so uh, for me, I've, I'm on my like 10th camera. And so what I'm looking for when I'm buying my next camera is a little bit different than what uh, you may be looking for as your first camera or second camera. So just something to keep in mind. Now this next feature is without a doubt for people who uh, may take the camera off of a tripod. Maybe you're a vlogger. Maybe you wanna do some uh, handheld shots or you know move around. Uh, something you wanna keep into consideration or a feature you wanna look out for is stabilization. Uh, now stabilization can come in a few different ways, but the two most uh, popular uh, is a digital image stabilization, which means it just, you know, uh, software wise will smooth out video uh, in your camera. And then the other one is hardware, but it's called in body image stabilization. And this is when the sensor in your camera is actually created to minimize shake and jitter. And uh, most cameras that don't have image stabilization is very jittery and you can, you can tell, but nowadays you can get pretty good cameras uh, that have good image stabilization, whether it be digital or in-body or what they call IBIS, in-body image stabilization. So something you wanna keep into consideration, a lot of Canons have that digital image stabilization, Sony's more or less can have that in-body image stabilization, but nonetheless, if you get a camera with interchangeable lenses, some lenses actually have what you would call either uh, image stabilized or optical steady shot. So the lenses 
have some technology in them that uh, help with shake and jitter. And so that's definitely a feature on a lens you may wanna look at. But if you combine the two, like if you get a camera that has in-body image stabilization with a lens that has optical steady shot or is image stabilized, and you put those on each other, man, you're gonna get some really smooth handheld footage, uh, whether you're pointing at yourself or you're pointing it away from you. Uh, not too many compact cameras can uh, do this too well but more or less the, the, the idea that you can pair the two is a possibility and definitely something you wanna look out for. The next feature may not be as important as the others, but I think something to consider is definitely battery life. Uh, some cameras, although has all the features I mentioned earlier, have a really short battery life and uh, is, becomes very impractical having to have a handful of batteries at hand, all fully charged. And when I'm in a shoot like this, having to swap that out would be uh, not fun. But you can always bypass this if, if you find a camera you like that uh, doesn't have the best battery life, more than likely you can find a continuous power adapter. So instead of using the battery uh, that it comes with, you can take it out and put a battery in there that hooks up to continuous power like your wall and that'll give you unlimited battery, battery power, but definitely something to think about. If you are gonna use your camera away from a place uh, that has accessible power, then uh, does the battery life last long? Just something to think about, and I think something to consider when looking for your next YouTube camera. Now, as you're refining the camera that you are probably gonna pull the trigger on pretty soon here, and as you look for more uh, tutorials and reviews on this specific camera, Something you wanna ask yourself, is this camera beginner friendly? If this is gonna be your first camera other than the smartphone you've been using, um, then that's something to keep in mind. That's something to ask yourself. I would actually say that Canon does design their cameras with beginners in mind. Um, that doesn't minimize the ability of the things that you can potentially do. But I would say on the other hand, a lot of Sony's uh, maybe not be as easy to learn, but I would say their potential to really grow and use and get into color grading and get into you know, high frame rates and things like that uh, is definitely something to think about. And uh, I think more than anything, you just have to ask yourself, am I up for the challenge? Do I want to learn the camera? Or do I want the most easiest thing? I wanna be able to plug this thing in, turn it on, hit record, I'm in focus, the background's blurry, it sounds great, we're good to go. Now I would totally say that there are great cameras out there on the market that have beginner modes, but also are just easy to use straight out the box. Turn it on, hit record, and start filming videos. But I would not stop there. I think it's really important that you really educate yourself on the camera you own. Um, you know, we've, we've done a ton of content on specific cameras on this channel, which have led people to purchase them. But it goes to show that once you buy that camera, you should do everything you can to become a master at that camera so you get the most out of it. You know, that I think it'd be unfortunate to have a super great camera that can do all these things and you're shooting everything in auto mode and you haven't really accessed the full potential of that camera. If that was the case, just stick with your phone and level up your audio and, and lighting and stuff like that. But if you're getting a camera and you're putting some money into this thing, definitely master it and get really good at it and become an expert at the camera you own. But nonetheless, I wanna point your attention to our playlist where we compare a ton of great cameras for YouTube specifically. So you can check that out by clicking or tapping the screen, or you can check out another one uh, by the one underneath that. And uh, I cannot wait to see you in a future video. I love you, peace. Bye.